Welcome to Right on Track, a songwriting podcast. Thanks to Tone for tuning in. I'm Demi Michelle Schwartz, and I'm thrilled you're joining me on my songwriting journey. So kick back and relax, don't fall flat, and remember, stay right on track. everyone, welcome back to another episode of Right on Track. I'm so excited because joining me today is Raquel Aurelia. Hey Raquel. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fantastic, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. I'm so excited because today we're going to be talking about navigating the music business, which is huge, especially for independent artists. Before we dive into this though, can you share with everyone a little bit about yourself and how you got into music? Um, Yeah, so I started in music uh, most like around 17 years ago, really. I I met a producer from Los Angeles named Tony Papa, and um, he was always, he was my friend's uncle. And she had talked about him for years and I'd always wanted to sing and I didn't have a demo. I didn't have anything. And I, I just kept putting it off because I, I wanted to have my first impression be a good one. So long story short, um, we finally agreed to meet in Los Angeles when I was going there. And he sent me a song ahead of time to just, he said, maybe you can come in the studio and we can try it that way. And I'll just hear you sing the track, which was a big, like a big opportunity for me, but it was also extremely nerve wracking because I, you know, I wanted to make a good impression. So I did, I went in the studio and I recorded a song called Tears. Um, and I, you know, we just kind of played around with it and, and he heard me sing and, and um, he, you know, we talked and um, it just, it just turned out from there. He wanted to do a whole album together. And I was just so like overwhelmed with like, Oh my goodness, we're finally doing this because I had wanted to start so badly and I wanted to send things in and I didn't want him to be unprofessional, but because of him, I really did start out in music um, because of that opportunity. And then we ended up doing an entire album together, which uh, was my very first album. And we mainly recorded it in Los Angeles, but he's recorded for Weird Al Yankovic. He has Grammys. He's recorded with um, uh, James Brown. So yeah, he was like a mentor for me at that, at that moment in my life. And uh, he's, he's such a great guy. So yeah, his name is Tony Papa. He was awesome. That's how I started. And yeah, from that point, just started, um, you know, recording. I did my first album. I did a lot of shows, got to open for some really cool people. Um, BB King was my very first person that I opened for. Um, you know, we did more full bands back then. Uh, I do a lot more acoustic now, but, and then I started writing music probably about five years into that journey. Uh, I met another producer out here and started writing. And I've been writing ever since. That's fantastic. What an incredible story. And that's so awesome that you had somebody who believed in you so much to give you that opportunity. And I also love how you brought up making a good first impression because that's huge, especially in the music industry. It's basically one shot. If you blow it, that's it. And so it's awesome that you really took the time to reflect on is this going to be a good first impression? I have to make a good first impression. And having somebody who believed in you so much to help you make that incredible first impression is just fantastic. So congrats on that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I was very fortunate. And she had, I mean, I probably could have started maybe a few years earlier because she had been asking me, you know, let me, she had been trying to set us up to meet. And I just, I just wasn't, I didn't want to do it. And then finally, when he said, hey, let's do it this way, then it was perfect. <laughs> so yeah, it's all about timing. <laughs> It definitely is. And yeah, like, especially with music, you have to do what feels right for you and when it feels right, even though it's something you really wanted to do. You know, you held off until it felt right, which was kind of like me too. I really started to like songwriting and dive into that when I was in college, but I didn't have the time or the energy being an undergrad to pursue that. And even though I really wanted to, I knew I couldn't really give it my all. And so I waited, even though it was something I really, really wanted to do. So yeah, I definitely think it's important to wait until the time is right for those opportunities that let you make a great first impression. Definitely. I agree with you on that. So let's shift gears a little bit and dive into our topic for this episode, which is navigating the music industry. And to start this off, would you like to read an incredible quote by Faith Hill? Sure. Um, The quote I'm reading is, um, like you said, by Faith Hill, says, Nashville was totally different than I ever dreamed. I had only seen the music business on television and been to a couple of concerts. I had no clue. This is so true. How do you feel about this quote? (laughs) <laughs> it's funny because um I love that quote by the way and um I can completely understand what what she's talking about here and how she felt because 
It really is. Um, until you've gone to Nashville and you really see, I mean, we, we just like anything before you see it in person and, and get to experience it, you, you have this vision of what it is, right? So, um, you have no idea like what it's about. And Nashville is such a beautiful place. Um, so much, uh, gosh, there's so many talented, talented singers and musicians. And on any given day you can go and find on several different in venues, you can find different uh, musicians, um, uh, that are, starting out um some that are undiscovered some that might have had a few hits under their belt they're doing singer songwriter rounds or some that have been playing it uh, down on music row for i mean not on music row but on down on broadway for years and years and years um just for tips you know and a lot of those bands down there do play just for the the tips that they make um because it's such such a sought after uh, gig for them but yeah nashville is a completely different um place and it, i really highly encourage everybody to get there and see it and experience the music and the and the restaurants and just the the cool vibe and the whole nostalgia of it all it's really it's really cool i'm actually going to nashville for the first time in november so i'm super excited oh you're kidding yeah there's a songwriting retreat i'm going to so i'm super excited for that yeah very exciting that's awesome you're gonna love it and and like i said when when you go you know try to experience um, everything you can about it, you know, go to different, if you can go to some shows yourself and just see some songwriter rounds, you're going to, you're going to be blown away. I mean, I've been in a songwriter round before and there's a girl on here, um, not on here personally, but on, on, um, social media that her and I are now obviously friends, but we, we did a songwriter, uh, singer songwriter round together and she started singing and I looked over at her cause you know, we're like three or four in a row. And I was like in such like, in awe and kind of just like, are you serious? Like, how is this girl not discovered yet? Like she's so talented and so different and she's not really in Nashville. You know, like you think Nashville, you think country, you think um, country ish at least. And she's just has her own little unique, almost like a Sade vibe kind of like, I can't explain it, but I I've met some of the most amazing talents just even doing rounds with other writers and writing stuff and uh, yeah so she's one in particular that I was just like blown away like what in the world this girl's amazing so yeah experience all of that go out there and you know go to the different restaurants and you're gonna love it it's really cool yeah I'm super excited and something you brought up when you were talking about your friend is that she's so talented but hasn't really been discovered yet and I think that's huge because when you think about the music industry, at least when I started, I focused on the music. It was all about the music and when I was creating and, you know, singing and writing and all of that. And you don't really stop to think about the business side until you're in it. Like you could be the most talented artist, but there's so many other artists trying to do exactly what you're doing. And I think for me, when I started, it was a major reality check because I put out my first two singles and knew nothing about the business, knew nothing about marketing or networking or anything. And the songs just sat there. And then I was like, well, how does this work? What? <laughs> yeah. I, know, I was so confused and I was so frustrated. I felt like I was terrible because no one was listening to my music. Um, so when you first started in the industry and wanted to really take that leap, how was your experience adapting to the business side? Well, it's funny because, um, you know, so much has changed in the last even 10 years regarding social media and the platforms that are available to us as artists now. Um, so when I started, you know, we really didn't have a lot of access to, um, Instagram and TikTok and, and reels and all that. It really wasn't around. So, um, like I said, Tony Papa was kind of like, he took more of a manager managerial role, but even though he wasn't my manager, but as far as like the, the paper, uh, the paperwork side of music, like when you, when you release a song and, and what you have to do and how you, if say it's a cover, say you need uh, permission going through Harry Fox, getting permission to do your stuff, copywriting your music, all of that was kind of, um, he helped me with a lot of that. And I've had to learn as I go because, um, everything's changed now, you know? So as I've, as I've been in the music business, I've learned and seen so many changes and that weren't available to me when I first started. Uh, and especially even in marketing, like we didn't have all the access to market the songs the way, you know, the way it was. So we focused back then on getting distribution. Uh, and that's tough. And so, you know, we would try and get out there more trying to find someone who can distrib distrib uh, distribute your music. So that was a completely different animal when I started. And that's changed now. That's making it much more 
um, accessible to, you know, your musicians now have a lot more platforms to, to use, to get their music out there, which is, I think is, it's wonderful now, you know, it's so much different now. Yeah, it is a lot different now. And something you brought up about how things have changed and you're continuing to learn and grow is so important. Um, a couple episodes ago, at the beginning of the podcast, when it started, I had Des from the Music Marketing Academy on. And he said, one of the things he said toward the beginning was that the music industry is always changing. And if you're going to keep up with it, you have to adapt and you have to continue to change how the industry is changing. And I think that's huge. And I think like in order to continue our careers and be successful, we can't just focus on the music. Yes, we like creating the music that we're creating, but if we're just going off and doing whatever you want to do and not paying attention to the industry and what's going on, it's absolutely impossible to get anywhere. And so I feel like that was a lesson I had to learn right away is educating myself about the industry and knowing how things are done in order to even take steps forward. Yeah, I completely agree. And it, and it's funny because there are a lot of resources and there's so many people um, throwing things at you on the internet, not literally, but, you know, writing to you, like, I'll get you 50,000 streams, I'll get you, um, you know, real followers, or I'll get you this, or I'll get you that, or I can put ads on your Facebook, I can do this. There's so many promises from so many um, unreliable sources that that are not real. And they're reaching out. And as an artist, you're like, well, who do I believe? This sounds great. Oh my goodness. You know, and, and it's constantly sifting through um, those kind of things as you're trying to learn about the business and learn who you can trust. And I, I really highly recommend going on referrals when you're looking, sorry, my, my dog, <laughs> he's in the background. Over. So I really highly recommend going on referrals when you, um, when you're trying to, you know, get your stuff out there because you can't just trust anybody. And I learned the hard way a couple of times when I, when I first started out, like learning who was trustworthy and who wasn't, uh, you know, after spending a, a little bit of money on somebody who wasn't what they said they were, or somebody who said promised things they couldn't deliver. And, you know, you kind of very, you're very almost goal, you're gullible in a way. Like I felt gullible a little bit, like, you know, thinking people were, genuinely all good and it's just not the case like you have to be very careful you have to do your due diligence and highly I just highly recommend anyone in the industry to ask several people who do you use for marketing who do you use for your PR who do you use for promos um, what is your recommendation and it, it it's constantly doing that it's constantly reading yourself too going on the internet um, anyone that sends you anything you know check check out check how it plays out does it look real does it go to their website what does their website look like go to their reviews so it, you do have to do a little, your homework nowadays because you have to be careful because it seems like there's so many people trying to you know trying to pull one over on you sometimes, especially with music, because, you know, they make a lot of empty promises, or they may promise to get you, you know, a million followers, and, and they maybe they could, but then they're all bots, and they're not real, and then it's just a whole other story, or they could get your account shut down, so you just got to be careful, you know? Absolutely fantastic point. I'm so happy you brought this up. It's so important, especially now with Spotify. There have been artists who literally got their music pulled because they bought fake streams. And also just from the authenticity side, I think it's so important to be real and genuine with everything that you're doing, especially in music. And if people are buying followers, it's so easy to look at somebody's Instagram or Twitter and then, you know, look at their Spotify by streams or their press or interviews and if things aren't correlating it's really clear that something is weird and not right and I think you know going back to making good first impressions like you were saying at the beginning if you're just starting in the industry you have a couple songs out and you bought yourself a bunch of followers maybe that will attract you know industry people's attention but then when they dig deeper they'll see something's off and then you just blew it for yourself so it is so important to know who to trust and you know really dig deep and you know not fall for those empty promises yeah and it is hard because like um it's funny I have a girl that helps me and she's from Nashville and um she's an artist herself and I, I do rely on her a lot because she, um, she knows the business pretty well. And she's like, it'll, it's funny. I'll get something and I'll be like, does this look legit? And she's like, Nope. <laughs> she's like, I told you if, unless it comes from like an actual email, um, if they, if they say, you know, would you like to place ads on your Facebook? Um, that kind of thing. So if you say, if, if they send you just like, you'll see, I get them all the time, but, um, I probably have like 10 in my inbox right now. 
oh, we want to put ads in your Facebook. And there's several different ones. Like, okay, if one's $500, one's a thousand, one's 1200, one's whatever. But if they come like this, just random, like, no, no, like heading, no kind of business website, no, like, Hey, I work for such and such. They're almost always going to be a scam. And it's hard to know. Cause some of them will send you like a website that maybe like a generic one. And, and where I, where she, I rely on her a lot is like, she kind of dots the, <laughs> dots the I's, you know, and cross the T's on those kind of things for me, because she'll be like, well, yeah, it came from this source, which if you go back, it has nothing to do with this, what we're talking about. So like, you know, sometimes if you delve a little deeper, you're like, oh, great, you know, another one. But with this, with the Spotify, it's true. Um, yeah, many promises of people to give you streams and and um, the monthly listeners and all that. It, it, and it does have to add, it does have to add up. Sorry, my dog's going to do something with his ear. It does have to add up with, um, with the streams. But like, and especially like Instagram, they continuously change their algorithm and that's a frustrating thing as an artist that's been building and building and building and I do put my home my my time in when it comes to um you know just trying to to be authentic and take time to answer people and blah 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 so I do that a lot and at the same time I'll find uh, um Instagram will mess with your algorithm so like you'll go from getting a thousand thousand likes on pictures and, and all that and all of a sudden you're you see that it's dropped to like say 500 or 200 or 300 and it's just weird. They're very, it's, it's, it's a really, I'm not sure what's going on there with Instagram, but a lot of times they'll do that. And it's very, very frustrating because with me, I, I pay attention to all that. Like what in the world is going on? Like, why are my stories all of a sudden gone down from a thousand to like 200? It's, they're constantly messing with the algorithm and I don't really know the formula yet, you know, but Sometimes that can be frustrating, especially when you're putting in your time. And I do answer everybody that there's like a, it's like a farm over here. I've got all these animals. The further I try to walk away from, you can hear my cat, my dog. Um, but yeah, the more I do, like I do my homework and I, 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 you know, answer emails and I, I, I try to genuinely interact with fans and, and people. And I find that a lot of times that's frustrating because when, when the algorithm is being messed with, you can see a difference in like your followers or your likes, I should say. And so I, I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, so that can be frustrating, especially if you're not buying fans, or you're not buying followers, you know what I mean? Yeah, you brought up a lot of fantastic points. And I honestly think what you kind of said there at the end, interacting with your fans and making it a point to do that is so important because you want to be genuine, and I think a big part of navigating the industry is building that genuine following. And if you're putting out content that is truly you and not buying fake followers or fake streams and all of that, I think after a period of time, if you're so genuine online, then people in the industry will gravitate toward you and see your presence and invite you for interviews or ask to play your song or whatever so I think I think as we start we really want to see these big numbers and huge following but that's just not realistic and I think you know taking those smaller steps and focusing on not doing anything that can hurt your career but just be you and let it take as long as it needs to take to grow Um, and then people will start coming toward you. I agree. And I I do think, um, you know, it's funny. I've met so many people through Instagram. Um, It's been a great platform for me. Um, And, you know, I've had some good people help me with promos and and, and, um, things like that and helping me, you know, attract followers and blah, blah, blah. But I do, I answer all my stuff. Like I have a girl that helps me post, but she doesn't, if she doesn't post anything, unless we've, we go through it together. So I don't just say post whatever you want. Like I'm in charge of my Instagram. So even if she posts, uh, whatever you see posted is, has either has been approved by me or it's like, I send it to her and then we go through it together and then we'll go over, go over verbiage. And then all she does for me from that point is schedule it, which is, takes a, takes a lot off my plate because the scheduling takes time. And if you go post on LinkedIn and Google and, and uh, Twitter and Insta and Facebook, you know, it takes time. So it, she's helping me like with that, but then I have, then I go in and do my homework, you know? So then it's me doing answering emails and interacting. And because of that, because it's me, it's not just a generated like copy and paste message when I comment on people's things um, because I'm in a lot of groups too. And on Instagram, um, 
that we all follow each other and we all encourage each other and a lot, you know, like groups of like women, a lot of I mean, two of them that are really cool that I love that we support one another, but you, you know, so you don't just write emojis back. You write like authentic posts back to one another and you follow and like each other and support each other. And those kind of things really help. But if it wasn't just me, you can tell, I mean, I see it all the time with people that have the standard copy and paste message. And that's what a lot of these companies offer. They'll say, Oh, we'll go in and, like your like you know help help you with liking people's posts and commenting and all that but you'll see the same standard um generate generated <laughs> response to everybody but yeah you have to be patient with it and you have to genuinely build your audience and and your following and um it takes some time for sure like you have to set some time aside every day to like okay i'm going to do my instagram emails at this time or direct messages or comments or it, but you but the more you give the more you receive right so like if you're being genuine and you're giving that out there and, and supporting other artists, it does come back to you. Yeah, I completely agree. And I also think what you said about, you know, managing the time there is so important because so much goes into being an artist. When I started, I thought it was all about the music, like I said, but you have to focus on, you know, the posts and the emails and scheduling interviews and, you know, sending your song out to people, studio time. There's so much that goes into it and, and it can really power up. Like the more you are involved with the industry, the more you have to do. And that's where I think having supportive people around you and building building a team because you can trust those people when you start you don't necessarily know who to trust as we were talking about but once you find those people then you have people you can ask questions and you know like turn to when you need something and maybe you have a graphic designer or a red developer or something so you're not doing everything yourself which I was doing at the beginning and it got so overwhelming and so I think one of the biggest things with navigating the industry is finding those people who can support you and are part of your team that you can rely on and everybody's working toward your goal of being a bigger artist and you know creating amazing music absolutely definitely and there's a lot involved I mean there's a lot that that if you don't know and you're new and you don't have a label or somebody that does all that for you there's a lot of things you have to do to protect yourself as an artist as far as protecting your track making sure that you get the copyright for it making sure you register it with um if you're with BMI or ASCAP, you know, making sure those are registered the right way so that if they do start getting air, um, airplay or, you know, streams and all that, that you're, that you're always protected. That's always, you know, somebody can't just come and steal your music because it's time stamped. Like when you copyright, you know, when you send in a recording, it's, it is time stamped through your, through your pro tools or whatever session you used. Um, so those things are all things I've had to learn and I'm still learning. I still have a lot to learn about the industry, but I've learned a lot about just protecting my music or getting permission. Um, if, like, like I said, I think a lot of artists don't realize, especially when you try to get permission on music, it's um, you have to do it the right way because you can't just go out and release something and then say, oh, I'll deal with it later. Um, and that's what happens. You see all these, a lot of the lawsuits that happen with people that have maybe borrowed a, a track or borrowed a sample from, from a famous song and then their song starts doing well. And then all of a sudden the artist comes after him like, wait a second, that sounds just like my song, you know? And so you have to just always make sure that you are doing your homework along the way and protecting your music, protecting it from somebody else taking it or protecting yourself from like, you know, if you created something, when you created it, the dates, like it's all written down. It's all through the library of Congress. Cause a lot of people don't realize you have to do all that when you, when you record, you know? Um, so it's crazy. It's a lot, a lot to learn for sure. Yeah, a lot of great points about copyright and protecting your music. Because like you said, you know, if you don't have your music registered the right way or don't have metadata in your MP3s or whatever, you're not going to get recognition or paid for your music. If you're releasing a cover song, you need a cover license and all those kind of things. So you definitely have to learn. There's so many amazing books out there too and going to conferences and taking courses. There's a lot of ways of getting the information from industry professionals and not relying on a random Wikipedia article or something. It's definitely important to get the information from people in the industry who know what they're talking about. Oh, yeah. Well, it's funny because um, one of the covers I did, and, and especially Twitter, like Twitter's really funny. And certain artists are very fun, like very, very um, strict regarding their music and you playing it. Like, um, I've had a lot of things taken down on Twitter when I, when I publish, uh, when I put anything with my, one of my, my cover songs, everything I wanted and, 
it's it's doing well as far as people loving it and, and it's getting, you know, good traction and all that. But like, if I put anything on Twitter, they take it down and I have to fight to get it back up because I have permission and I had permission to do the song, but for whatever reason, they, they don't want people putting her music out there. It's weird. So it's, it's some artists are very, um, like I said, are very, um, they're on it. Like Twitter, every I've had, I can't really post anything that has me, like I have a video of it. So if anything that's me singing her music, then even though I have permission to sing it and I've had, I went and did my homework and did everything the right way legally, they still flag it. And then I have to fight it and put it back up. So it is frustrating um, sometimes when you do your homework and you do everything the right way and then you go to like share it. Um, and then, you know, Twitter, I think to me has been the most strict when it comes to um, posting uh, it, like a, a cover song, you know? Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, the industry can be super frustrating at times. This is just one example, but the industry is very frustrating. And I think in order to be part of the music business, you have to have patience, you have to be persistent. Um, but what are some other qualities that you think anybody who is an artist or getting involved in the industry in some way should have? Yeah, um, I I feel like you you definitely have to have perseverance when it comes to this. You have to have um, thick skin because not everybody's going to love your music. Um, it, your maybe your music may be. I mean, it could be getting a million streams and not everybody's going to like it. You know, it's just like we talked about timing. We talked about um, things like that. It might be the right person heard your song, put it on the right platform, and it just got massive exposure and people loved it. And then you may find an audience that that's just not their as a book. It's not their thing. So you have to have patience. You have to have thick skin. Um, and you can't take it personal. If people don't like your music, um, it, it may not be for everybody. So you have to write from your heart and you have to just throw it out there. And, you know, the right people will be attracted to your music. If you're doing it for the right reasons, um, you know, if it's genuine, people can feel that. In, um, and like I said, you'll find your audience um, if you continue to just keep doing what you love and keep putting good music out. Now, if your music is, you know, the, and you have to also be open to um, to criticism and you also have to be open to to constructive criticism as far as like if the, if the if it's not done well, um, you know, be open to that. Like maybe your track isn't mixed as good as it could be and not necessarily going off every person's word, but if it isn't the right you know, mix, maybe, maybe be open to remixing it or remastering it. So it has a better sound. So you have to be open. Um, so my biggest things would be open, patient, um, thick skinned <laughs> and, um, and, and do it, you know, and passionate, passionate about what you do, because it can be discouraging at times if you're not getting the results you want right away, but you know, keep, keep pushing. So I love everything that you said. I agree with everything, um, you know, honesty as well, being honest, being authentic, and also professional is another one that's coming to my head because, you know, if, if you're involved with some kind of industry discussion or communicating with somebody, networking, you have to be professional and you have to present yourself in a way that, you know, puts you in a good position and doesn't, doesn't lead other people to spread negative things about you if you're unprofessional and so I think that's one of the most important things because we can get so caught up in you know being criticized or focusing so much on our music and getting frustrated and all those things that we can say things without really thinking and especially in the music industry things can spread really quickly so I think it's really important to always be mindful um, and professional. Well and that's another thing before we go to as well is bringing up this point when how you present yourself is very, very important. And it took me a while to kind of get, get on board with this, but like, let's use Instagram, for example, uh, that's your resume really. So your page is a reflection of you. So, um, in the beginning, when I first got Instagram, I, I used to love to do fun stuff and just silly stuff and like things that I loved. Cause I was like, Oh, this is for me. But then I started going, wait a second, this is my business. So this is something I have to take a little bit more, um, like not more serious, but it's your, it's your resume. So, what you post every week, be mindful of how you post and what you post, get in a rhythm of, okay, music Monday, travel Tuesday, uh, quotes on a Wednesday, throw back on a Thursday, like get in a system, um, that's consistent and professional and the more professional photos you can post, um, the better. Um, and to me, it's taken a while. It's taken a few years for us to get that down where 
we started posting pretty consistently um, and like putting them out a week and it had like ahead of time, but it's, it is your resume. It's pretty much like people are going to go to your page and see, okay, what is this person about? What does her music look like? What does her career look like? What is she posting? And it is important that you are posting um, quality stuff about yourself that shows you in, in a, in a, in a professional way. And, and if you have a funny side, sure, post some funny things here and there. I mean, that's who you are. People want to see that as well, but, but for the most part post, you know, try to keep it um, consistent and professional and, and post about you. So people know, you know, know how, you know, post your clips, post your, your interviews, post whatever you can, because that's, that's, that's your business card really. Fantastic. Yeah. And I also think that a website is also super, super important. Like if you're an artist and you do not have a website of some kind, even if it's just, you know, like an unpaid WordPress or Wix or something like I have an actual paid WordPress account for my website, but that's the home for your brand and your music. And like you want your EPK on there. You want your bio on there. I run a blog on my website. All my music is on there. And I think one of the most important reasons of why you should have a solid website like that that's so professional is because we can focus on Instagram and TikTok, which I don't have, by the way, um, Twitter, Facebook, and, um, and like all these social platforms. But what if tomorrow we all woke up and Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok no longer existed? Um like that's one thing that if we have a website then we have 100 percent control over that and that's our platform and so i also think it's really important um from a professional standpoint to you know have a website if you don't have a lot of money for example if you're starting out as an artist and and, and we kind of did the tumblr route because it's very easy to do and i'm actually in the process of it's funny you said that about the website because i have been looking for people um, kind of shopping around who I want to do my, redo my website, but we kind of just did the Tumblr route. Like it's an easy way for an artist to throw everything up. You can transfer stuff back and forth from your page, from your Instagram, from your whatever over real quickly. And if you have no other option at the point, at, you know, it's just an easier way to get your music on a website. That's uh, inexpensive for, um, for artists. So people starting out, maybe try the Tumblr route to go just to get everything up in one place. Like you said, one big, website um and then eventually work from there to get you a better site that and not not that tumblr is not a good site but i'm saying get you a better platform like a more professional bigger website that you can you know really send people to where it shows everything about you so it's funny you said that because that's been something i've been talking to my girl about like i'm like what's i need to get me a, a, a better website right now because we've just been doing the tumblr route because it's easy because i throw everything from instagram over there too so it's been nice to be able to do that because when your website it's not as easy to put as things like that up you know but i agree with you on that link trees have become extremely popular just to throw all your socials on there if you have any interviews you want to spotlight youtube whatever um that's super popular if you don't have an actual professional website definitely yet. link tree tumblr um just being able to have access to these and and it doesn't really cost much it, you know it doesn't take a lot to just throw everything on there and like you said you can throw things from link tree send people in your bio to link tree um, those are ways to get things going until you really find somebody that you trust to do your web page. Like, or, or, like if it's a nice graphic designer who can really do a, a good job with it. Um, but yeah, I agree with you there. This has been a fantastic conversation. But before we go, can you share final thoughts on navigating the music business? I would say, um, you know, focus in on your craft, focus in on what you want to do. Uh, keep your team very small. So navigating it is the first thing I would do is find somebody that can help you um, with the paperwork side of it as you create, um, help find that one person, whether it's a marketing person that you love, friend of a friend, whatever it is, um, to start doing that. Because when you write a song, uh, you've got to record, you've got to protect it, you've got to um, promote it. Um, and those things are so important nowadays. So navigating, uh, I think if you can find a good person to help you with those things, uh, with your posts, um, in, in that that's like almost like five things you need to know, you know, posting, recording, protecting. Um, and then we want, we have to have time to create, right. And interact. So these are all things that I would say navigating your way around it is, is to, um, you know, do your homework, go on referrals and uh, really just start from there. Start with a good team of people in your corner because you can't do it alone. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a superstar, you can, you have to have help. And it helps you have more time to create as well when you have somebody that you can trust in your corner. 
So I say do all that because there are so many important things that do it right. Make sure that you're doing this the right way. Make sure you're registering your music. Make sure it's protected. Um, make sure you're, you know, using legitimate sources to promote. And um, I, I do say go on referrals for all of that. It, it'll help. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for being on the Thank show. Thank you. Though. Where can you share with everyone where they can find you on social media and listen to your music? You can find my music on RaquelAurelia.com, which is my website. And you can also go to um, Instagram, which everything is Raquel Aurelia um, for Instagram. That's my handle there. Uh, Twitter, uh, Google, uh, LinkedIn, uh, anywhere you can find music, Facebook. It's all under my first and last name, which is Raquel Aurelia. So, yeah, you can find it there. Spotify, Reverb Nation, um, Apple Music, uh, all of the above. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been awesome having you. Listeners, thank you so much for listening to this amazing episode with Raquel Aurelia on navigating the music industry. And of course, until next time, stay stay right right on on track. track.